Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, all incredibly uh, important and optimistic. I always tell people the single most important job for a North Dakota senator is a farm bill that works as an effective safety net, but also helping to build other kinds of tools um, uh, like trade, like increased economic opportunity, like value added, what can we do um, to uh, actually uh, produce uh, fiber from the cotton that you grow. And, and we look at all of this, and, and the other side of the coin beyond a, a safety net is a good market. And so I just would like um, your reaction to some of the concerns or n no concerns that you have in terms of U.S. trade policy and how we can move forward to advance increased market. And maybe if you want to add uh, a discussion about value-added agriculture and, and um, where the opportunities are in value-added agriculture that we're missing today. So we'll start with the corn growers. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Um, I think that as we see the continued improvements in uh, our ability of, to grow crops and, uh, and have such uh, prolific uh, plants that do so well under weather adversity that uh, the, the need for free trade agreements and, and the ability to sell, uh, whether it's the, uh, the corn, the uh, livestock uh, as meat, or, or the ethanol or DDGs uh, as value added, all of these things, we, we have to find more and more markets because we have the ability to produce more. <clears throat> Thank you, Senator. Uh, for, for soybean crop, we export 60% of what we grow uh, from the United States. And uh, in South Dakota and North Dakota, it's probably much higher percent than that. Uh, as far as value added, we would uh, we'd love to put it on a hoof and uh, export it that way. Um, so uh, continuing export, uh, expanding our livestock industries in our states is critical. Uh, also, the FMD and MAP funding, uh, we have had in the U.S. Uh, a pretty stagnant um, uh, funding of that. It's been the same for many years. It has very effective program, uh, a high rate of return, and uh, uh, soybeans would love to have that expanded and, uh, and utilized. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, yeah, trade is vitally important to wheat, where 50 percent of our crop is exported uh, every year uh, nationwide. I think there's two components here. One is enforcement of trade agreements we have now. We have some countries out there now subsidizing their wheat farmers to the uh, point of almost $10 per bushel. So we need to enforce those trade agreements that we do have. The other component of that, though, is we do need those trade agreements out there. And so that's vitally important. And with those trade agreements coming out there, as Mr. Scott mentioned that we do need MAP and FMD funding increased. Um, the return that we have figured up is around 35 to 1 ratio return on our dollars. And according to a recent Informa economic study, it has increased net farm income almost by 15 percent in being able to have that MAP and FMD funding out there to help establish those trade agreements and those relationships with those other countries. Thank you. Mr. McKitchen. Thank you, Senator. I would echo the statements of Mr. Shim and Mr. Scott. Uh, the MAP and the FMD funding is critical. And uh, as cotton, as I stated earlier, about 75 percent of our cotton, raw cotton, is exported. Another 15 to 20 percent is exported as cotton textile products. The main export markets are China, Vietnam, Mexico, Turkey, and Indonesia. And we also would like to explore other options, and as well as opening up the U.S. and China trade dialogue to get additional cotton U.S. exported over there. We, uh, we were also focused on working with Congress and the administration to ensure that NAFTA renegotiation does not harm the existing market for U.S. cotton and cotton textile products. So we look forward to working with all of you on that. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your work on the Senate Bill 275 with uh, Senator Bozeman in helping open up some rice in Cuba. So we appreciate your work on that. Um, 50% of the rice crops also exported, uh, although that's only we're only 8% of global trade. So we're uh, privy to world market prices, and like some of the other panelists said, uh, high subsidies in other countries. Uh, we have to compete against them. Um, also, the FMD and MAP funds are very important to the rice industry as well. Yeah, I, I think when when we look at this, 
Um, we, we look at uh, component pieces of, of the farm bill and the safety net, but the best safety net is a free enterprise system where we can sell our products. And no one's more sophisticated in any industry on trade than agriculture. And really appreciate all your support. Let's continue the dialogue and let's make sure farmers aren't left behind as we renegotiate and as we look at trade agreements. Um, one of the things that I, um, we've been concerned about in the, the downturn in commodity prices and the additional challenge is access to credit. Um, so far it's been, you know, I, I serve on the banking committee and so I frequently have conversations with bankers in my state and we're very concerned about regulators becoming uh, unaware of what it is like to be in a cycle like we're in and whether in fact we're going to see real challenges um, both in terms of repayment but also in terms of uh, securing additional operating loans. And so I want to hear from anyone or all of you in terms of what you're seeing right now in trends in your state and whether you share that concern. Let's we'll start with Mr. Atkinson. Um, access to capital is, is extremely important, uh, no matter what commodity you raise or what sector of agriculture you are in. Uh, whether those are private lending institutions or whether those are USDA loans, access to capital is just crucially important. Uh, within the sorghum industry, uh, we're, we're in a much more arid region, and so generally when we have a downturn in ag economy, we're hit very hard very early. Um, luckily, we have had some very bumper crops in our area, and we haven't seen as much of those problems yet. Uh, if we don't see a turnaround in some of these commodity prices, we could see a, a very real crisis. Uh, for so as of yet, you haven't heard from any of the producers that they're having trouble accessing credit? In our, in our direct area, no, I have not. Okay. Within other areas, I, I have. Great. Yes, it's, it's quite a challenge um, in this industry, too. Most um, peanut producers are also cotton producers and corn producers as well, and those prices have been very depressed. It has made peanut producers, uh, some lenders are requiring peanut producers to grow more peanuts and messing up our rotations to an extent because that's the only crop with somewhat of a problem. So now we have bankers farming. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Uh, it becomes very important, the PLC, the safety net that the PLC provides, as well as some of the marketing loan programs become very important to, with your relationship with your banker. And I think, you know, the other point that we all want to make is that without a strong crop insurance program, without a strong Title I, access to credit is going to be very, very difficult. Almost it, impossible. It, right. These are interlinked. Mr. Ryan? Yeah, I, I think in, in my region of northwest Minnesota, uh, there certainly has been a, a an issue with attain, obtaining credit. Uh, many farmers have gone on to a, a higher loan bracket or interest bracket in their loans, private in the private loans. Uh, the USDA money gets eaten up rather quickly. So there's there's big concerns. There's even been some declining of of, uh, of loans to certain farmers, and with some terrible consequences as bad as suicides. And uh, very, very critical situation, actually. And that's, we've had, that's under good crops. That's under <laughs> good yields, uh, but poor pricing. I can't imagine what would happen if, you know, pricing got worse. Well, we're going to find out in North Dakota with yeah. bad crops this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any other comments? Yep, go ahead. Sugar farming takes a lot of money. I think we get it between $900 and $1,000 in a crop before it's harvested. Uh, younger growers are having a tough time. I know, th I know three bankers personally, they're good friends of mine, and they're very concerned about their younger growers, and I guess I can't uh, arrate, alliterate enough of just about how important it is to keep this younger generation in farming. They're the future of agriculture. And uh, another thing, I'm gonna talk about credit, mentioned before about the CCC loans. Uh, without that, it just complicates the problem. And uh, we, do, we, we just, we need to keep not only ourselves in business, but these younger growers coming up. Mr. Nobis. After two years of subpar margins, it is starting to pinch seriously. Um, I, some people can't get credit. I, I have a neighbor who is milking 1,000 cows and farming 5,000 acres. There's no cows left there. He went through bankruptcy because he couldn't get the credit. 
I'm sure there's extenuating circumstances. I've talked to other people who they've traditionally had a line of credit. They've maxed out their line of credit. And because of the prices, they just haven't been able to repay it. So they've had to term out some loans. And they've been able to, they were in a strong position before it hit. But the deeper we get into this, the more critical it becomes. But the one thing we have noticed with the bank regulations the way they are today, the bankers are requiring a lot more information than they used to require. Uh, and in our own case, they, they're requiring um, um, annual, yeah. well, I, in some farmers' cases, annual appraisals, which the farmer then has to pay, yeah. and which if is you can kind of a double-edged sword. I just wanted to make the point, Mr. Chairman, that we don't stand alone in, in securing credit and providing a safety net. We've got to work with the bankers, and the bankers have to know that we have a strong safety net in order to keep these producers in business during tough times. 